New York Times. 1919. CPR train wreck kills 23, injures 50. Freight and Negro immigrant special in head on collision in Maine. Wreckage catches fire. Many of the dead and injured burned. Engineers of both among the dead. The line concerned was constructed and operated by the Canadian Pacific Railroad. Known as the International Railway of Maine, it crossed the state and provided a shortcut between the Canadian cities of Montreal and St. John, New Brunswick. On the morning of December 20th, 1919, train number 39, an 11-car immigrant special bound for Montreal, was moving west in four sections. Third, 39 carriage steerage passages from the liner Express of France, which had docked in St. John the previous day, carrying a few Canadian soldiers and 300 immigrants, mostly English and Scottish. By the time the third, 39 departed from Brownville, Brownville Junction at 6.25 a.m., it was running over five hours late. Freight train number 78 had departed Mechanic at 6 p.m. the previous evening. It consisted of 26 cars and had been waiting on a siding at Moosehead, where it had allowed the first two sections of number 39 to pass. It had received orders that it was five hours ahead of the third, 39, giving it plenty of time to reach Morco. It left Greenville at 6.40 a.m. and arrived in the siding at Morco at 6.57 a.m. At Morco, further orders were received to the effect that the third, not that third 39 was late and 439 was eight hours late. This order was misread and the freight train mistakenly believed that the 39 was now running eight hours late, giving them time to reach Brownville Junction before the giving them time to reach Brownville Junction before the end of their 16 hour shift. At 7.14 a.m. as dawn approached, the trains collided. trains collided head-on just west of Ottawa Station, a curb beside Little Greenwood Pond. At a combined speed of 50 miles per hour, the baggage car next to the engine was entirely demolished. The next passenger car telescoped the one behind and for two-thirds of its length. The wreckage then caught fire, adding to the horror. Seventeen people were killed outright, including six children, engineman and firemen of both trains and six more dying after being freed from the wreckage. Fifty people were injured, some severely, and were taken by special train to hospitals in Brownville Junction and in Bangor. So this is, my mom and I are headed into the Ottawa train uh, crash site from 1919. This is one of the roads that we have to go on. It's um, really not made for. It's really not made for an infinity to drive down. I don't think it's not as bad as it was the last time I tried to look for the trestle. Um, kind of in the middle of nowhere, really. It's a beautiful day though. 56 degrees out. Uh, I think we're about. My GPS is glitching, so I have the directions written down. There's no signal out here. But yeah, it's a beautiful day. Every light's on the car like usual. I think we're about five minutes away, ten maybe because I'm driving for ten miles an hour. We are literally driving actually on an ATV trail. This ATV uh, miles per hour signs like this one coming up here, I believe tells you to go 25 miles an hour or something. It's kind of rough for infinity. I've been going about 20, 15, 20. And it's not, let's see, right there says access route for uh, ATVs, 25 miles an hour. So, yeah, there's a whole lot of nothing out here. We're about a mile from our turn. Infinity's taking a good beating.
So we took a right onto Ottawa Road. And this is what it looks like. It's uh, a little bit smoother. Um, some areas are pretty bad, so I'm probably gonna need to replace my front end after this is so over a bit. I don't know about but I'm getting there. Hopefully I find it this time. Tracks. I made the strength tracks. Leave. We can park somewhere up here, I believe. <laughs> okay, so the train tracks come through here and then they meet. The road crosses them up ahead somewhere. I think that's where people park, I'm not sure. Okay, so yep, somebody's parked there. Yeah, I believe it's up that way. A ways. Oh. Oh, the hell we're gonna get up there. <laughs> kind of looks like somebody just left their car here. I'm pretty sure it's that way, at least. Well, I think it. All right, guys. So my mom and I, I think we're at the right place. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. Um, it's kind of hard when you lose GPS to figure out where you are. So hopefully we are in the right spot. Yeah, so look how dirty the car got just driving here. Oh man. This looks like it's been here a while. I don't know. It looks like... Doesn't it? Like it's in the middle of... It's May. And you got a truck just sitting here with a plow on it. Okay, a sticker ran out and... 2017. Look at all that. What the hell? Maybe they don't. I don't know. I wouldn't ride on a train on this. <laughs> so yeah, this is uh, beautiful right here. A stream going by. A little rock ledge train tracks and then you go a little bit further we're gonna see a lake. It's really pretty. So we're in the middle of, of nowhere pretty much and it looks like a boat just kind of like floated up on shore. <laughs> That's crazy. Oh yeah. Some rail uh, railroad cable thing. I don't know. I know, we should take the boat. Go up. If I had paddles, I'd go up the river with it. The lake with it. <laughs> Some kind of towel over there or something. Too bad, not too buggy. I don't think we have much longer to walk, hopefully. But yeah, this is cool. Okay, so we're coming up. We saw this X. I figure this is probably where um, the crash site happened. There's a little memorial here. You got a little cross, somebody left. I don't know what all that is, but. So supposedly there's parts and stuff here. I don't know. This is supposedly it. So right here is where someone put a cross. This is where the crash happened. Now I walked way down there and there literally was no uh, debris. I'm sure it's been over a hundred years. So 
Looks like some people have left some things here. Um, let's see what we got. I'm not sure what that says, but this looks like some train, maybe some train parts here that people have found. We're at, we're at with the train wreckage where 23 people died back in 1919. We're gonna try a spare box out here. Uh, I don't think we'll pick up much radio. We could, I don't know. We'll see, we'll see what happens. If there's any spirits wandering around here, you can use this to talk to us. I know it's different. You've probably never seen anything like it. Hi. You can come up, you can come up to here and say hello and I'll be able to hear you. If you died out here, can you say dead? If you're here where this train wrecked a hundred years ago, can you say dead into this? If you died in a train, let people know and say train into this. Train. Did you hear him? Same guy's voice, too. I got goosebumps and it's in the middle of the day. <laughs> Help us. The guys can help us. He's out here, let us know you're here by telling tell me the color of my shirt. I thought I heard black a couple times. Maybe not. Can you say goodbye? Can you say train wreck and then I'll shut this off? Train. I just said train. Yeah. It said train really clear. I'm dead. It said I'm dead. They're coming through now. I got goosebumps all over me. Calm. Calm. <laughs> I'm calm. Sorry. Wow. It said train so clear. We're talking. We're talking. She said we're talking. Well, it was definitely a fun little adventure. Um, we did about a 15 minute spare box session, EVP session. Didn't get any EVPs, but there's some pretty interesting things on the spare box for being out in the middle of nowhere. Um, but yeah, I finally found the spot. I've been thinking about coming here for years and I finally found it, but now we're gonna go walk back and drive down the horrible road home. So thanks for watching and hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe, share, all that good stuff. Have a good day.